Thank you for joining us today, episode 71 of the Pool Chasers podcast. As always, our mission is to help educate and inspire in the form of a podcast. On this special Veterans Day episode, we interview Michael Sandoval, who served 15 years in the United States Marine Corps. We want to thank Michael and all the other men and women who have served and continue to serve in our country. Your sacrifices do not go unnoticed. We appreciate everything you have done and continue to do for our freedom. It's an honor to live in this great country, and you make that possible. If you see a veteran today, or any day that is, thank them for their service. So throughout the episode, Michael shares his story with us and how boxing at a young age and his time in the military helped shape who he is as a person and also instilled many of the principles used by his company above and beyond pool remodeling. We hope you enjoyed Michael's story as much as we did. So let's get right into the episode. Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Diafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. All right. Well, thank you for joining us today, Mike. Appreciate you being here. Yeah, no problem, Tyler. It's my pleasure and my honor to be here as well. Thanks, man. Can you um, introduce yourself to listeners real quick? Yes. My name is Michael Sandoval. I'm the owner of Above and Beyond Pool Remodeling. Uh, we're located out of Gilbert, Arizona. We uh, operate valley-wide. Very cool. So we jump back a little bit and... Would you mind sharing a little bit about your past, how you kind of grew up, your life journey, and share that with us? Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, growing up in the business, my father um, was actually in the business, and my father actually only did like decking and concrete, decorative concrete coatings um, around swimming pools, of course, and just growing up, doing that, I was the only fourth grader with a job, you know, summers, <laughs> weekends, so on and so forth, and uh, eventually carried on into junior high and high school, and um when I graduated high school, I worked with the business full time. And what happened was me and my dad got into a little bit of a scuffle and um, I decided to go off and join the United States Marine Corps. And I went off, joined the, joined, joined the Marine Corps. And when I came back, um, you know, I kind of realized that the uh, civilian life wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> For and sure. my father realized that not having me was actually really hard on him, you know. Mm-hmm. And so we come to a we came to terms and we um, we ran the business together and I became a fifty percent partner. Basically, started running the business with my father. Um, Which ser- business is that? Is that above and beyond, or is that a different one? It was a different one at okay. the time. Yes, okay. it was a different business at the time, and that business is no longer around. And um, eventually, I want to say we worked in a business for about seven eight years. And um, my dad's a good dude. Love him to death. Um, he taught me a lot of what I know. Wouldn't be here without him. Uh, but my dad was getting older, you know. And so I had different ideas, different mindset. And being in the Marine Corps, I just had, I, I just really had a lot of things that I wanted to do in terms of the the direction of the business and how I wanted it to go and how we I wanted it, how I wanted us to be perceived by the general public. Sure. So it turns out that I ended up buying my dad out. And he was okay with that because, you know, as like I said, he was getting a little older and, you know, his better days were obviously uh, behind him. So what I did is I took the company and I re- rebranded the whole company, relicensed it, rebranded it, uh, myself being a qualifying party, of course, rebranded the company, our colors, if you see in our logo, above and beyond, pull remodeling, it's all red, white, and blue. I wanted the general public to get a better understanding of who we are and what we represent. Uh, to me, the red, white, and blue is just more patriotic. Um being a Marine and having a Marine Corps background, I really wanted that to stand out. Um, I wanted it to show. And a lot of the principles that we incorporate in business, I took those right out of the Marine Corps book. And I figured if we can win wars overseas for 244 years, why can't we win in business here stateside? And those are kind of some of the principles, not kind of, those are some of the, those are mm-hmm. the principles I've incorporated in who we are and how we operate. Sure. What are some of those principles? Yeah. Um, one of the things I say all the time is um, we lead from the front. Marines lead from the front. We do. We don't lead from the back. Okay. Um, we work We to us. Nobody works for us. They work with us. We are a team. Um, one of the other principles that we talk about is uh, we say we inspect what we expect. Okay. Uh, another another principle that we uh, that we abide by is more actually more of a tradition. I think we talked about it earlier. Was talking about um, the Marines in the field when we're out there eating. Guess what? Your junior Marines eat first. Okay. Mm-hmm. Same concept um, with the company. Um, everybody gets paid. 
before Mike Sandoval gets paid. That's right. just the way we do business. Sure. If I can't pay my guys that are out there on their hands and knees every day grinding and working and sweating, then I need to not be in business because those guys need to get paid because they're the ones who make us shine. They're the ones who make above and beyond. So all of our juniors, all of our staff, everybody gets paid before I get paid. That's just the way it goes, and that's the way it's always going to go if I have something to say about it. Yeah, for sure. So let's jump back a little bit. I mean, so you were working with your dad, and what what led you to the Marine Corps? What what made you go that route? Well, as an amateur, um, I boxed for quite a bit of you know many years as an oh, amateur really? as an amateur boxer. I uh, competed um, state, regionals, nationals. I was competing in boxing, very active. Um, trained with a lot of the professional fighters. Um, had a very very good time. A lot of discipline um, throughout those years acquired. But um, what led me to the Marine Corps so was... So how'd you get into that, though? Says so your dad the boxing? Box? Yeah, how'd you get into um, boxing? <laughs> <laughs> so my dad picked me up one day. I was about nine years old. He picked me up from school. He says, jump in. I said, Dad, where are we going? He says, uh, well, we're going to go to the boxing gym. I said, boxing gym? You mean like boxing gloves? Like like punching people? He goes, yeah. <laughs> I said, Dad, um, I never boxed before. He goes, oh, no, 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 no. I- I'll teach you. I'll teach you, mijo. His name, you know, mijo sure, means yep. Spanish. In yep. Spanish for son. And he was like, I'll teach you. And I'm like, okay. So we went to a boxing gym. Well, I, what I didn't know was my dad was going to throw me in a ring to spar <laughs> for the first time ever, right? And I sparred this kid who just beat me every which way but but loose. And, um, oh, man, that's rough. It was real rough. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, I don't know if I want to box. He's like, no, 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 you'll get better. Every, everybody gets beat up the first time. You know, you're just learning. And so I, so I hung in there, and okay, and eventually just competed and competed and trained and competed. And it was, it was – uh, probably the best times of my life. Um, what what kind of motivated me to go into the Marine Corps was me and my father were having kind of a falling out when with the business. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm going to join the Marine Corps. You know, I'm going to go on out there. If I'm going to join the military, I want to be the best. So I joined the Marine Corps. And um, again, no regrets. Absolutely loved it. Instilled a lot more discipline in me. Having a boxing background, I was very familiar with the physical aspects of it. Um, it really worked out and I have no regrets. I met, I got call them brothers. I've got brothers for life now that I will always know. Um, but basically joined the Marine Corps and did some time in the Marine Corps, total of, uh, almost 15 years oh, wow. that I served yeah. and, uh, no regrets, love it to death. <laughs> Still very active in a lot of different, uh, facets of that, if you will. Sure. And, um, so you were boxing when I mean, what, who, who were some of the guys you were fighting? Some of the champions you said. You, okay, so... So you went... Explain that part to me, because you were at nine, you got beat up, right? Right. And then you just kind of skipped over to it was the best time of your life. But what kind of in the middle there, what were you... What'd you go through? What'd you learn? I mean, it was all, all through high school? I mean, you were doing... Yeah, yeah, yeah. All through... Uh, so basically, the rest of my elementary and junior high, all through high school, a few years after high school. Um, so... Pretty much what happened was when I started, when you're, when you're competing, you've got your state, you've got your regional, you've got your national, your invitational tournaments, you've got a ranking system. Uh, we happen to be in a very, very tough state. Um, the West Coast now is very dominant in boxing, mm-hmm. as they are in MMA and a lot of these contact sports. Yeah. Um, I was a little guy, still a little guy, but um, I fought, I started off, my first fight was about 55 pounds. I had my first fight at 55 pounds. I was nine years old. Uh, my last fight was at 155 pounds. Okay, um, so I, as you could see, I obviously grew, <laughs> grew, grew into those shoes. But um, had a lot of tough fights, man. Had about, about 65 amateur fights. Wow. Um, sparred some really, really tough guys. Sparred um, uh, with the likes of uh, Bones Adams, former world champion. Mm. Um, used to spar with uh, Diego Corrales, former WBC world champion. Um, a lot of these guys that were in and out of the the gym. Um, these professional fighters. We had professionals in our gym as well as amateurs um so got the opportunity to spar with some of these guys um i met oscar de la hoya um michael buffer the ring announcer terry norris um, former world champion and just got to be in in the realm in the presence of some of these like very inspirational um legendary fighters um which was really cool but boxing is a tough sport i mean wrestling mma um these are all very physically exhausting sports but they do teach discipline and what they teach you is regardless of how much you train how tough you think you are there's always somebody better there right. just is okay you can be really good and I was you know I, I I won most of my fights and had lots of knockouts trained very hard very competitive very tenacious but 
at that upper elite level, there's always going to be somebody better, okay? Yeah. Um, teaches you discipline. Teaches you not to get too big-headed, not to get above yourself. Um, and the Marine Corps just went on to do the same thing. Yeah. Teaches you um, how to obey authority, how to listen to your coach, your mentors. Marine Corps would be your drill instructors, your staff sergeants. Um, so, yeah, had a very uh, very lengthy career in uh, amateur boxing. Wow. That's really cool. I was, um, I think I was about nine years old too. I, uh, my dad used to sell sports memorabilia on eBay and stuff when it was a big popular back then. Yes. And I got to, uh, he had a, a signing with Ken Norton yeah. senior and, uh, I got to kind of shake his hand and we, we posed for some like arm wrestling picture. It was pretty cool. His, hand, his hands were huge, man. Ken it was Norton really was, cool to, cool Ken to meet was him. Awesome. He was a beast. Big yeah. guy. Yeah. Well, he's a knocked out. Tyson, right? Yes. It, uh, oh, no. Uh, that Ken Norton. Ken it would have been, uh, I think he fought Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali, that's right. Yes. Yep. You know, yeah, we knocked out Muhammad Ali. So that's pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and cool. his son ended up playing for the Dallas Cowboys, I believe. Yeah, I think he's a coaching now, too, for maybe 49ers or something. Sounds about he right. He was. Yeah, that's cool. So, you know, what What do you think you learned from boxing then for, from life? I mean, obviously discipline, right? Anything else that you kind of took from those younger years? Lots of discipline, lots of discipline, um, absolutely, 100%. But I'm going to tell you, the thing I learned most about boxing was you do not reap the rewards of life, of your career, of school, whatever it is, you do not reap those rewards before you put in the work, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. My coach used to tell me all the time, he used to be like, you're going to fight, you're going to fight next month? And I'm like, yeah. He said, you're going to be in the gym? I said, maybe. He said, excuse me? Mm -hmm. I said, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I plan on it. He goes, well, you better plan on it because if you're going to fight next month, you better be in here six days a week training if you think you're going to fight next month. You know, and what that teaches you is that teaches you, guess what? You don't win that gold medal. You don't win that trophy. You don't get that reward before you put in the work, wow. you know. Um, it's kind of kind of it's kind of funny. I use this example, and I think this is what boxing taught me. I always use this example about the buffet. You know, when you go to eat at a buffet, it's actually quite the opposite. Um, which isn't a good life lesson. <laughs> but you actually grab your food and you get to go eat and then you pay. You mm -hmm. see, boxing taught me the opposite. You pay and then you eat, okay? And that's what boxing taught me. It's just you have to put in the work. And same with our, our, our company in, in, this, in this industry. We have to put in the work before we can reap the rewards. Right. Um, you have to put in the work as a Marine before you can gain rank. You mm -hmm. see, um, everything in life follows that. You've got to put in the energy, the effort, the work. Right. That's a very good point. So when you started looking at the military, you said you wanted to pick the Marines for that reason, the, to pick the best. Did you have somebody else in your life that was in the Marines or what influenced you to pick, take that route? I didn't. Um, at that point in my life, I don't think I knew anybody where that was a Marine. Oh. Um, it was really interesting is actually when I went to boot camp, I found out all kinds of different people that I knew and, you know, my, like I had a couple of uncles that were Marines and I never knew it. Really? Um, yeah, which was very interesting. So, um, yeah, I didn't have anybody that said, hey, join the Marine Corps or if you want to be the best, join the Marine. None of that. So what was, the, what was the decision to go to the military? I mean, you said you had a fallout with your dad, but... I, mean, I, I had a fallout with my dad. Um, my dad did not like the military. Okay, mm. my dad was like anti-military, all right? Mm. And I think a bit of that, besides wanting to be the best and join the Marine Corps, a little portion of that was just kind of being antagonistical towards my dad. Mm. And I said, you know what, I'll tell you what, I'm going to join the military. And I did. But I didn't walk into the Army, the Navy, or the Air Force office. I walked into a Marine Corps recruiting office. And we have a joke in the Marine Corps. So every time you join, when you're in the Marine Corps, <clears throat> Marines will reference, and they will joke about, Oh, yeah, and I bet you just walked into the Marine Corps office too, right? Like, they joke like that <laughs> because virtually no Marine just walked into the Marine Corps office. They sure. get recruited. That's why there are recruiters, okay? Um, I actually walked into a Marine Corps office, <laughs> okay? <laughs> nice. Walk, walked into a Marine Corps office, and I still remember that day, and the, uh, the gunnery sergeant, Gunny Hernandez, he stands up and says, uh, what can I help you with? I said, uh, I want to join the Marine Corps. He says, you sure you want to join the Marine Corps? You, you know you walked into the Marine Corps office, right? This is the Marine Corps. This is not the Army. It's not the Navy. It's not the Air Force. It, it almost seemed like he tried to deter me from joining the Marine Corps. But I think what he was doing is he was making a point like we are the best. Sure. If you want to be the best and you want to get 
you know, you want to have a hard training and a rigorous training program, then, you know, by all means, stay. But if you're not entered to that, then you might want to go next door. So I sat wet, sat down with him. And, you know, he asked me a standard question. You know, do you have a, you know, a valid Social Security number? You know, how old are you? <clears throat> when are you thinking about joining? And so I answered all the questions. And um, he said, well, I'll tell you what. He says, um, we can send you off to MEPS next week. I said, next week? He said, yeah. I said, I'm in. Let's do it. So I was literally going home to tell my parents that I'll be going to MEPS. Okay. Wow. And my dad freaked out. He's like, are you sure you want to do that? They're going to be your mom. They're going to be your dad. If you don't like the way I yell at you, you sure the heck aren't going to like the way they yell at you. And he tried to give me the whole, um, you know, lecture of why I shouldn't become a Marine. And I got to give it up to my dad. When I joined the Marine Corps, he was not the happiest camper. But when I came back from the Marine Corps, my dad could not have been more proud. He was just so proud of me that I was like first generation, not only military, but first generation Marine Corps, mm -hmm. you know? And I really think my dad did some studying up on his own of who the Marine Corps is and what they stand for. And his pride, I mean, is just through the roof. Anybody who talks to my dad will then later tell me, yeah, you must be the Marine son. Like he is so <laughs> proud that I joined the Marine Corps and he has a Marine son. And it's so funny because I feel kind of, well, I do feel humbled, but I feel kind of weird for my other three brothers, you know, because it's mm -hmm. like sometimes all he talks about is his son that's a Marine. <laughs> and going into the Marine Corps, it wasn't like that. Sure. Going into the Marine Corps, it was quite the contrary. Yeah. You know, so um, that being said, dad was a little stiff at first, loosened up, proud as all get out that I am a United States Marine. Yeah, I bet. I mean, that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you for your support. Yeah. Here at Pool Chasers, we're all about sharing information so that you can become even more knowledgeable pool professionals. The folks at Pentair get that. And to show their appreciation, we invite you to enroll in the Pentair Partners Incentive Program. This flexible and simple program rewards you for your loyalty, starting with your very first sale of Pentair equipment or systems. Not only that, but being a partner gives you immediate and exclusive access to programs and training events, all which are developed to help drive even more business to your door. So to start earning rewards, visit PentairPartners.com or click the link in the right up below. So what 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 did you go? Where did you go in the Marines? Where were you stationed at? Um, well, I was uh, I was part of a reserve unit here in Phoenix. I was also part of a reserve unit out in uh, Tucson. Got mobilized as a reserve. Um, went over in 2003 for the invasion in Iraq, mm. and we followed uh, First Marine Division right on into Iraq. So we were part of that historic. Um, overthrowing, if you will, the Iraqi government at that time with Saddam Hussein. Mm. Yeah. How was that? Um, historic. Yeah. Historic. Um, it's very, it's pretty wild to think that that was 2003. And when we went, because we were the first wave, we didn't have internet. Our care packages didn't catch up to us till we were just about out of country. We didn't have regular showers. We did not have hot meals. Um, the Marine soldiers and sailors of today They've got that, which is awesome. They, they should, okay? Um, but when we were in there, we were literally sleeping on the dirt, camping out. Um, it's just what happened. We, it, was, it was something that went down. The balloon went up. The Marines were there. We're expeditious. That's who we are. Um, we didn't have all those amenities. They didn't even catch up to us till we were just about out of the country. So when I look, at, look back on that, I appreciate my service even more because we did what we had to. We didn't wait till... We had Wi-Fi set up. We didn't wait till we had, um, you know, a base set up um, where they can cook us hot chow with shower facilities. We went in. We did what Americans have always done. When a balloon goes up, we go. And that's what we did. Um, and now that I look back on it, even though it was horrible to us, you know, these young Marines going into a country with um, what seemed like less than what a homeless person would have. Uh, but we made do and we accomplished our mission. Well, I'm sure that. That made you guys stronger as a as a brotherhood too. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mean, all all these Marines that we mobilized with, you know, I've got still got contact with them in some some form, whether it be email, we text message each other throughout the day, Facebook. So that's awesome, and that's a bond that like nothing but combat can build. Right. How long were How long were you there? Um, almost seven months. Okay. Almost seven months on the first push. Oh. Yeah. Which in 
reality doesn't seem like a long time, but I'll tell you what, when you're in country, um, a day is a month, a, mi a minute is an hour, you know, it's just like time stands still. It seems like a long time to me without with sleeping on the ground and, and, not, and not, not having much food and yeah, anything. Absolutely, man. And not to mention, and not to mention Tyler, like when you're over there, let's be honest, you don't know if you're going to see the streets of Phoenix again. You don't know if you're going to see mom again. If you're going to see your brothers and sisters. Those are all unknowns. If you do, you're blessed, you know. And so those unknowns are actually harder than the circumstances we were um, confronted with, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So how, did, how far did you go through the ranks and where did you kind of end up going? I got up to a staff sergeant. Um, oh. I, I made staff sergeant when I got out. Um, I was, uh, it, it's funny, we have a saying, they say, uh, what do you call a uh, gunny select? Cause I was going to be gunny select coming up in January. I got out in November. Um, you call a gunny select a staff sergeant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I got out staff sergeant. Um, enjoyed every bit of it. It wouldn't take anything back. Made some, like I said earlier, made some good friends that I'm going to have for life. I call them my brothers. Yeah, for sure. So coming back to civilian life, I mean, how was that transition? The transition was uh, we have we have a short transitional period um, before we actually get re officially released. Mm. Okay, and the, the Marine Corps does its best to try to reintegrate us into civilian life. Um, you know, they show us different videos. Uh, we have all kinds of, um, you know, counseling sessions, just basically saying, Marines, this is what to expect. This is how it's going to be. You're probably going to get a little agitated. It's going to feel a little weird. Um, you're not going to be with your brothers. And, you know, as Marines, as being young Marines, we just kind of him and haw our way through that, um, not really thinking much of it. But when you do step foot back and that plane does land and you're back on your home turf, um, it's rough. Yeah. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but you actually want to be with your brothers, mm -hmm. even though you may have a girlfriend, you may have children, you may have a mom and a dad and a family. Um, they're your family. Yeah. So you're actually missing that. And, and I fell victim of this to some degree where I, every day for about the first maybe 45 days, couple of months, I was gone. My family was like always asking for me, hey, where's Mike? Have you seen Mike? I was gone. I was with the Marines. We were hanging out. We were um, playing basketball. We were um, doing whatever it is Marines did, drinking, whatever, <laughs> you know. Right. Um, that's what we did. We wanted to be amongst each other, even though we couldn't stand each other and got bored with each other and fed up with each other overseas in combat. But when we were here stateside, we wanted to be with each other. We just gravitated towards each other. And I think that's something natural that happens when your bond develops on that level in a, in a case like being deployed to combat. Sure. I mean, you, you go through so much with one another and then, you know, you're, they're probably the only people that understand how you feel or what you're going through right. back here, um, you know, on the mainland. So that's, that's understandable. That's, that's a really good point. Right. Since we've started with Pool Chasers, we've spoken with a lot of pool builders and designers. Something they have all mentioned is that having realistic, detailed 3D renderings to show their clients is a game changer. Something that makes the rendering come to life is including products and accessories that your clients can purchase from you. One manufacturer that makes this particularly easy is Ledge Lounger. By going to ledgeloungers.com slash CAD, you can instantly download a 3D file for any product in their catalog. Everything from their signature chase to their new patio furniture, cabanas, games, is all available to drop into your 3D designs. We've seen these renderings pop up on Instagram full of in-pool and outdoor furniture, and you can't help but stop and look. If you want to transform your 3D renderings, whether you use CAD, Pool Studio, SketchUp, or any other platform, you can get the product files you need at ledgeloungers.com slash CAD. That's ledgeloungers.com slash CAD, C-A-D. So when you were growing up with your dad and learning the business, what were you doing in the pool industry? How, what were you being taught and kind of what was that business doing? Yeah, so um, growing up with my dad, you know, just um, working for him at that time, I was, uh, we were doing concrete and concrete coatings, okay? So um, we'll burrow in concrete, 
um, doing decorative concrete coatings uh, over pool decks, driveways, patios, garage floors, and so on. Um, when I eventually uh, took the business over, I relicensed the business and was the qualifying party to literally do everything. Mm. So I got my, I obtained my pool building license um, to build and remodel swimming pools. Um, so we can literally, we're licensed. We have the same license as uh, one of our bigger companies here, um, Shasta Pools, yeah. uh, which is a great company. Uh, we have the same licenses they got, both okay. commercially and residentially. Nice. So were you out there as a young kid doing tile and coping and everything? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. As a kid, I was doing all that stuff. I was trawling, mixing mud, wheelbarrowing, prepping, papering, taping, um, acquiring materials, setting up the jobs uh, for the next day. Um, even in high school, it was funny because on weekends, I'd go out to a job, and I'd, I'd have a crew with me. And, you know, I wasn't part of that. I wasn't even old enough to drive. And I remember <laughs> being at a customer's customer's house and he'd come on out and he'd be like who's in charge here and i'd raise my hand and he'd look at me and i'd be like yes sir how can i help you and he's like how old are you <laughs> <laughs> and and i was the guy in charge you know i'd been doing that for many years and um i had a good team with me and he would ask me the questions and i'd answer them and you know he'd be happy sure. but it always surprised him to see that a 15 year old was leading the crew um remodeling his swimming pool <laughs> yeah how was it for the crew i mean was that was it hard to get over a little bit they thought it was funny they, they? They, they laughed <laughs> yeah they thought it was funny yeah. a little 15 year old that's bossing right them around yeah yeah i, was, I wouldn't boss them around boss I, them, but... yeah I, you know it's I, I knew more you know i was the most experienced at that time i knew more than they did and uh of course i was uh the boss's son you know yeah yeah do you think that going through all that and learning all that really helps you understand that position now oh 100 percent, tyler you have to go through that in order to be in any leadership position. I mean, you just have to. You can't expect to be in a leadership position or in a position of any kind of power um, in any kind of business if you hadn't, haven't started from the ground level. You have to start there first. I believe that. Yeah, I believe that 100% too. I think it definitely helps you communicate in every way with them, helps you understand what they're going through, these hot Arizona summers and That's right. if you don't do all that and go through the grind work then it's, they don't respect you the same either they don't they don't and you know the thing is um I actually had a Facebook post out there the other day we got to a job site and one of my Baja steps wasn't filled in I didn't have enough fill dirt like it should have and we had a concrete truck arriving in 45 minutes my operations manager was there um who's also a marine um I was there and I had my plumber on site and he was just checking over his plumbing, make sure everything was good to go. Um, I said, you guys, when, when's concrete coming? He said, in about 45 minutes. I said, good to go. We got shovels? He says, yeah, we'll grab a shovel. So I was out there just the other day, um, I think it was Monday, and we were shoveling more fill into the Baja step to build it up to where we can then shoot the shotcrete and not utilize an extra four or five yards of shotcrete that we didn't need. Sure. Um, but what I'm saying is, the whole point to that is, even till this day, I don't ask my guys to do anything that I haven't or am not willing to do. And I think that's just huge. And when my guys see that, they're willing to do the world for me or for the company, I should say, right. because they know that Mike Sandoval has done it. Hey, and Mike Sandoval is willing to do it again. Right. And that means something to them. For sure. That's a huge leadership quality. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about Above and Beyond Pool than who – you know, you said you have a couple different military people on staff and you guys have a real, you know, way of doing things like the military. Can you talk about what you guys do? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> here at Above and Beyond uh, Pool Remodeling, one of the things I did when I restructured the company and I rebranded the company as a um, more of a patriotic company is I wanted to do things for the general public. More, more specifically veterans um, to not only show that we are a veteran backed company, but we're veteran owned. Um, I wanted to just do what I see a lot of companies and I don't throw anybody under the bus. I just see it a lot. I'm sure you see it a lot. A lot of companies out there that not, I'm not even saying in my industry, I'm just saying in general um, that will say that they are a, they support our veterans, but they don't actually do anything to support our veterans. And don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you got to go up to every veteran and give them 100 bucks. okay? That's not what I'm saying. Um, but what I'm saying is if you're going to be a veteran-backed company, you're going to be a veteran-owned company, well, guess what? Sometimes you're going to have to put out. 
sometimes you're gonna have to show your um you know show where you where where you stand and i think we do that as above and beyond um give you an idea um we do an annual veteran giveaway our company does um we've done two of them for the last two years we're gonna do another one coming up here around may or june um we're going to start soliciting for that so we can get another veteran. And basically what we do is we solicit out there for a veteran in need of a, a therapy pool, okay, um, that can't afford it. Swimming pools are expensive, whether it be a renovation, whether it be a new pool. Um, they're very expensive. They're very costly. Um, so what we do is, again, I don't want to say qualified veteran because to me they're all qualified. But we do our best to screen these people and to determine where the need is most and we will then reach out to that individual and, and and ask them if they would allow us to renovate their swimming pool. Or like last year, we actually gave away an entire swimming pool. Um, and if they allow that us, us to do that, we will move forward and put, put things into work to make that happen. Um, the other thing that we do, <clears throat> we offer discounts. We offer military discounts for any clients that are military. We don't just say, you know, you have to be a Vietnam veteran or you have to be active service. No. If, you're, if you've served in the military, you stood in front of our flag, not behind it, guess what? You get a discount from our company, okay? Um, another thing is um, I'm on the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation Committee, okay? Um, that's one of the things. It's it's not paid. Um, I'm glad it's not paid. Um, I give my own time and my service to help support and raise funds for scholarships for our military, okay? And um, that's the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation. And so between the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation, our operations manager, 22 years in the Marine Corps. He's retired from the Marine Corps. He's our operations manager. He runs all of our operations here at Above and Beyond. Our superintendent, our lead superintendent, retired Navy. Okay. Um, we have a salesman out there, Army. Mm-hmm. You know, so not only do we want to incorporate some of these um, veterans into our staff because they do have that honor, that courage, that commitment. But we also give back to our civilian population um, who are veterans, and we just we we couldn't be happier doing it. Right. Earlier, you were telling me about the license plate. Can you share that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation actually has come up with the license plate. It's a white license plate, and it has the Marine Corps emblem on it. Okay, it's got the Marine Corps seal on the left-hand side of the license plate. And we're one of the few states that actually has a Marine Corps license plate. Now, $15 of this license plate actually goes towards the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation funding, which will then in turn provide scholarships for that need of um, the, you know, the children of service members. So we urge that and we push that um, because it's something little. Um, you can actually do it online. You can um, go into a motor vehicle, and you can just tell them that you want the Marine Corps license plate. And you can um, sign up for it. You can get the Marine Corps license plate on your car. You do not need the DD-214 like you do with the veteran plate. So this is actually open to the general public. A lot of people who have not served and are not veterans, guess what? Their mom did. Their dad did. Their brother did. Their uncle did. Their grandfather did. So they can still show their support for the armed forces by obtaining this plate, and you do not need a DD-214. Wow. That's cool. So the scholarship is for the children of military? That's correct. Yes, sir. To go to college? Yes. Oh, wow. That's yes. cool. Cool. Well, what do you guys what do you guys actually do here at Above and Beyond? What's what's your what's your specialties? What are you guys kind of focusing on? Yeah, now you're speaking to my heart. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, what we do I here don't to- think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm sure so, you care just about much about this. Absolutely, absolutely. The um Marine Corps had some great times. Boxing had some great times. Um, now at a point in my life where, of course, you know, I've got a family. I've got children. Um, and, you know, building our brand and, you know, just doing good, providing a good product and service out there for people. Um, we are licensed to build pools. Uh, we only build about maybe 40 pools a year. Our primary focus, of course, is on the renovation side of things, remodeling. We can do anything with the swimming pool when it comes to remodeling. Depth conversions. We can add Baja steps. We can add new equipment. Um, We can convert in-floor systems. We can do LED color lighting, custom water features, slides. We can do it all when it comes to swimming pool renovations and on the remodeling side. What do you think is your favorite part? What do you enjoy the most? Oh, I know exactly what I enjoy the most. I enjoy speaking to my clients. Um, My staff tries their best to just 
get me in my little office and get me to stay there and not come out very much. Um, hard to keep me there. I love being in the mix of things. Um, I try not to step on my staff's toes, try not to step on um, anybody's toes, actually. But I do like to get out there on these job sites and love to talk to my clients and ask them, how are we doing for you? How are we performing? What can we do better? What do you like best about what we've done up to this point? How has the process been up to this point? Has it been smooth? Has there been any issues? I want to know everything. As a company that aims to be better, I want to know everything I'm doing right but I want to know everything I'm doing wrong. We have a term in the Marine Corps. It's called a just fire. So what you do is when you're when you're siding in on a point for mortars and you can't hit that point, you call back and you adjust fire so that you can now hit your target. Okay, That's what we do in this company. We find out where we're not hitting, what we're not doing good, and we adjust so that we can hit our target. So to answer your question... I love talking to my clients. I love it. I, I don't think I'm ever going to get away from that. Yeah. So, I mean, you're still, you said you're, you're coming back from job site earlier, right? You're still out in the field. You do the bids and you do, what are you, what are you doing out in the field still? That's right. So I don't really bid much anymore. Okay. Um, on occasion I do. Um, we get a lot of pool service companies that, um, that hold us in high regards and they want us to do the remodels for them. So out of respect to those relationships on the first one or two that I get from that pool service company. I will go and I will meet with those clients. I'm not above anybody. I have an open door policy. Anybody can walk into my office. So when those come in, I let those pool service professionals know that I take their their jobs and their leads in high regard and I give them the professional courtesy and actually will go meet with their clients the first couple of times. So that's what I was out doing this morning. Oh, wow, that's cool. So you do you have relationships with several pool companies around the valley? Yeah, I sure do. Pool service? Yes, we have relationships with pool services valley-wide. And um, those guys are awesome, man. Those guys, they, I, I can't speak highly enough of those guys. They are the Marines. They are the boots on the ground. They are in every backyard I want to be in, okay? And they're very knowledgeable. Everything from, um, I mean, pool service to pumps and filters and lighting and water features. These guys, there's always somebody out there that knows something that somebody else don't know. So it's they're pretty impressive. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I mean... Anything else you, you think we're going to share about the company? This is what I tell people all the time. My company, I, don't, I, I will never say my company is better than anybody else. I don't bash other companies. It's the most unprofessional thing to do. I get asked about other companies all the time, and I say, you know what? They're a good company. At the end of the day, it's a matter of who's going to appeal to you. Every company has something different to, different to offer. But what I tell people is this. I say I don't say that I'm tougher, stronger, faster, cheaper, none of the above. I tell them that I believe Mike Sandoval with Above and Beyond just wants their business more. I just want it more. And I feel that way. Every day when I wake up, I feel that I want the business more than the next guy. And I hope it shows in what we do and who we are and what we stand for. But other than that, all of my competitors, good guys, love them to death. There are plenty of work out there for everybody. We just believe that we do what we do and we've got a little recipe that works for us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for your time, Mike, and thank you so much for your service. We truly appreciate it. And, you know, that's, to me, one of the biggest honors you can do. Like, my, my grandpa was in the Navy, and I understand it, all the sacrifice, so thank you for that. Well, one of the, one of the things I want to say in closing, and um, I've, I've said this on camera uh, during our veteran giveaways, and I think it means a lot. And when it talks about, like, who we are, what we stand for, um, I'm going to read it here, and it talks about my belief of what a veteran is. And again, it, it, you can call it cliche or whatever, but it just hits hard and to the point. And it says, a veteran is someone who at one point in their life wrote a blank check made payable to the federal government of the United States in the amount of and up to including their life. And I mean that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks, for, thanks for being on and sharing your story. Thank you so much, Tyler. Thanks for checking out this episode. If you want to find out more about our guests or the sponsors of the show, you can check them out on the links we have provided in the write-up below. We have also provided links to our social media platform, so please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Our tag is Pool Chasers. If the podcast has brought you any value, please do what you can to support us through our Patreon page by going to patreon.com forward slash pool chasers. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast to be updated each time a new episode is released. One last thing. If you're not yet in our Facebook group, join it today to be surrounded by like-minded individuals who are all trying to better the industry. Thank you all for the support. We appreciate your time and your ear. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.